Welcome to Driving the Line, the pursuit of safety, where we talk about the real issues out on the road, focus on safe driving, and learn industry best practices from your hosts, Kenny Ray, Mike Bohan, and Jim Seibert, in the hopes that by driving the line, we get more drivers home safe and sound. This podcast was made possible by Marsh McLennan Agency. Welcome, everybody, to Driving the Line. We are your host, Mike, Kenny, and Jim, and I'm pretty confident speaking for the guys this morning when I say we're glad to be sharing a few minutes of your day with you. And guys, before we get started on our main discussion for this episode, I was thinking about the time of year that we're in, and there's a lot of young people who are graduating from high school or college or a technical school, and it made me think about the different seasons in life and and how Every day, there are people mustering up the courage to do something different, move up the ladder, learn something new. And I want to encourage those people today. And it's not just teenagers. It's not just students. There are people all over the place of all different ages, all different stages of life, striving to better themselves, which I know we all do that as well. And while I was thinking about this, and how to encourage these folks that I'm talking about here. I don't think I could come up with a better way to do it than to lean on both of you, my co-host here. You two are a couple of the most affirming people that I know. You're very, very good about encouraging folks to do better in their lives and continue on and learning. And and you both care about people succeeding in life. So so what encouragement would you give someone who's starting something new right now? Maybe they're just getting their CDL for the first time, or maybe they maybe they just got a safety director job and they've never held a position like that, or maybe they just graduated high school or a technical college. What kind of advice would you give those folks as they're starting this new stage in life? And Kenny, I'll jump to you first. Mike, I don't, I don't know if we've ever mentioned our audience. Maybe we have, and I just don't remember that. We don't script these these podcasts. We just have the three of us get on here and we have a conversation. And so w- what a great question you just asked about what kind of advice do we give uh, a little nugget, a tidbit, if you will, uh, for somebody that is thinking about uh, the next chapter in their life or they're even long range planning where they want to be. And I think and y'all, everybody knows I'm the old guy on this team and I look back over my life and of all the technology changes and all that, um, how do you stay current? How do you stay fresh? How do you stay uh, competent in your field? And I think there's a real danger that if people marry themselves too closely to current technology or current practices at the exclusion of all else, they run the risk of making themselves obsolete very, very quickly. So my advice would be commit to being a lifelong learner uh, just be open-minded about uh, learning new things, meeting new people, uh, having new experiences, embracing the fact that our world changes on a daily basis, our industry changes on a daily basis. And as long as you recognize that or, and are willing to understand that that's the field that we play on, it's an ever-changing field. And the only way to stay fresh to stay competent, to stay deeply, meaningfully in, involved in that is to commit to being a lifelong learner. And I and, and part of that for me is, uh, and, and I know both of you men are and I am as well, I, I want folks to commit to being readers. Uh, we have got to the point where people don't read much anymore. And there's so uh, many good books. And, and uh, I know there's other ways of de- uh, delivering uh, information nowadays, but I'm, I'm a book guy, but, you know, I heard a saying one time that not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. And so I would just encourage young people or whoever is listening to this podcast that, uh, if you're contemplating your future, uh, commit right now to being a lifelong learner. And thank you for letting me share that. What a great yeah. question. I love that, Kenny, the, uh, the reading and the, the, the learners and, I think maybe we take it for granted that we've got such a freedom in our country to be able to have all books over different topics and to expand our mind and to, and to help us think and learn something new. Yeah. I just devour books. Uh, if I was given some, 
advice to people joining the workforce for the first time, I think it'd be be fearless. We are generationally speaking, we've had the factory, the, Hey, I'm going to work this one job or I need to find a job. That's like what my parents had, or, um, I need to find a job that creates, um, X income for me. And by solely focusing with those blinders on, we may be missing what may make us happier than making a load of money. Times have really changed, you know, uh, joining the workforce for me, it, like it was, it was forced. I came out of the service fresh back from a deployment and I'm like, I have a baby on the way. What am I going to do? And I was unemployed for a long time looking for a dollar value. And a lot of wise men spoke into my life at that time. And when you are young and joining the workforce or you're switching jobs being fearless and realizing that you can start over if you're into something and it's it, it it's not filling your cup it's not providing don't be afraid to change so approach it and don't be afraid to start over uh, approach with uh, um, all the vigor that you can and dive in and learn and study and try to be a professional uh, in whatever role you find yourself in and then continue to learn and transition. And so too many people come in just being hey, I'm stuck here. This is what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And that's not the case. You may come out with a college degree and end up doing something that is so far not what you went to school for. And that's okay. And so uh, don't be too hard on yourself really get after it. Well, I appreciate that guys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be sharing that with some folks in my family actually. And, and specifically uh, my youngest, the baby of the bunch is, is graduating this year. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have him listen to this and I hope he hears your words of encouragement because the two things that you guys mentioned is being a lifelong learner and, and uh, just having no fear, being fearless and taking next steps great advice. And I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, as he's uh, heading off to his next thing, I know there's a bunch of people out there listening to us that are contemplating doing something new and, and it's, it's great advice. So, well, in addition to a bunch of kids graduating this month uh, from high school, college, tech schools, things like that, we've got something else coming up this month. And that is the annual C of SA international road check. And if you guys remember, if you've been listening to us for a while, we did a podcast on this last year as well, and and we'll probably continue to do that as the years go on. And and we're not going to try to recreate what we did in that podcast, but if you want to go back and listen to it, it's episode number nine of Driving the Line. And we talk about the history of Road Check, what it is, that kind of stuff. So uh, go check that episode out. It was, it was a great episode, and, and I think you'll get something out of it. But this year, um, as every year they, they, they set the road check up and they got a couple of different focus areas. Now this particular year, we're looking at May 14th through the 16th. And again, that's a midnight to midnight kind of thing where we're just going to see a higher volume of inspections. And I know Kenny, different States do this different ways, whether we're all hands on deck or just an increased level of, uh, of inspectors at, at scales, or maybe some more mobile units out there, some portable scales, Whatever the case is in the particular state that you may be operating in, the, the gist of it is there's going to be more inspections taking place during that that 72-hour uh, period. So um, it's U.S., Canada, Mexico, so every state's going to be involved in it. Last year that we were looking at uh, ABS systems and cargo securement, uh, which is interesting. Uh, Kenny and Jim, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. So, so last year, the, the two focus areas were kind of really focused on the truck, you know, with that ABS right. system and, and the, uh, the cargo securement. And this year, they kind of went back to that where they have one focus area that's on the truck and then one focus area that's actually on the driver. So the first focus area was the tractor protection systems. And this is just uh, a, a system that prevents air loss from the tractor if a trailer would break away or when a uh, tractor is not hooked to a trailer. And then we've got alcohol and controlled substances possession. So those are our two focus areas. And guys, I mean, we can just jump in. I don't care which one we talk about first, but um, I think these are two good areas that we need to talk about. 
if if we look at the uh let, let's start with the tractor supply or the tractor protection system can it um, this is something that companies should be checking, but this is going to be one of the focus areas on the side of the road this year, right? Absolutely. And you know, Mike, uh, we have learned over the past two years that we have a lot of listeners and we're, we're grateful for them that are not in the trucking industry. So what we're talking about here, or uh, let's just pretend there's somebody out there that doesn't have a clue what we're talking about. When you see a, a commercial motor vehicle and, and most people call them an 18 wheeler, when you see an 18 wheeler going down the interstate, there's a truck on the front end of that thing, and it's got a trailer behind it. And this system that Mike referenced, and it's going to be checked, is the air brake system on that truck. If that trailer were to come loose off of that truck and actually physically separate, there are a series of valves and devices on these modern trucks that what it will do is it will shut off the air supply coming from the truck or the tractor going to the trailer so that the truck, the driver in the truck still has brakes for the truck. And it will automatically set the brakes on the trailer so that it's not just freewheeling down the road. That's the design of this. And so what the troopers are going to be doing is, is when these trucks come in, they're going to be inspecting that system. And uh, they have a complete procedure they go through. They'll have the driver build his air pressure up to a certain amount. They'll have him turn the truck off. He'll release all the valves, and then they'll physically have the driver uh, unhook what we call the glad hands uh, in the industry. It's the connection between the truck and the trailer, which effectively kills the air going to the trailer. And then they'll check and see, did those two systems work? Did, uh, did, did it shut off the air flowing out of the truck so the driver still has air for his brakes on the truck? And did it automatically set the brakes on the trailer? And uh, there are several different violations they look for. Did, did the individual valves work? Did they work correctly? Did they work at the right pressure? Uh, and these are out of service items if they're not correct, which means that if, if, if they find defects, uh, you're, you're not going to be allowed to go down the road to the next truck stop or, or go 200 yards to the yard and get it fixed. That's one thing about road check. Uh, they hold your feet to the fire on out of service. So they're going to put a red sticker on it. And uh, you're either going to have a wrecker come get it or you're going to have a mechanic come out there and fix it on the spot, one of the two. Uh, but this is serious business. If a, tra if a trailer happens to break loose from a tractor, uh, it not only is it a threat to the driver driving that truck, but it's a threat to everybody else on that highway as well. And so one reason we always publicize road check, and particularly when it involves equipment violations, this gives trucking companies time, hey, you need to be checking these systems on these trucks and trailers when you're doing your PMs, when your drivers are doing their post-trip inspections and making sure that air brake system works and it works correctly. Uh, because in addition to being it out of service, another characteristic of road check is uh, they tend to write citations, tickets, mm -hmm. in addition to the things they put on the roadside inspection report. So meaning that the driver or the company will end up having to contact the court and pay a fine and those sorts of things. So it's incumbent upon the trucks, the mechanics, the drivers doing good pre-trip and post-trips to find these defects before road check gets here because uh, it's really, really important that you do. Well, and it just to your point, Kenny, that how do these companies check this stuff? Well, Kenny went through, gave you a high level overview of, of, of what the process is that takes place, whether it's a roadside inspection and mechanics doing it. But if you want specific information, there's actually an inspection bulletin that CVSA put out there that you can download off the CVSA's webpage. And it explains how the process of that inspection is going to work. Uh, so if you go to www.roadcheck.org, um, there's a, there's a, a, a flyer for these two focus areas, on this road check and and then on the tractor protection and anti-blade system side, if you go down through, it's going to give you tips on how to do that. And then you can download that inspection bulletin and it will walk folks through that process. So your mechanics should know that, but if you're doing some training with your drivers, if you're doing some training with your staff, um, there's some great information there. And I would point you to that because you need to, you need to be sure you know how they're going to do the inspection roadside. If you're going to check it, at the, at the, uh, at the shop and, and make sure the trucks in, in safe operating condition there. So, so check those two things out again, there's a flyer for the two focus areas, uh, but then get that inspection bulletin as well. If you get a shop and you guys are checking that in house, I think that's, 
um, going to be beneficial for you as always, you know, the CVSA is great about putting information like that out there. So we want to rely on their resources as well. The second focus area, as I'd mentioned, was the, uh, the alcohol controlled substances possession. Um, and this is, again, it's, it's pretty straightforward when in the regulations, obviously there are, uh, there are different parts to the regulations that we work with part three to two is drug and alcohol testing. But when we're talking about, you know, possession and, and under the influence roadside, you're looking at, uh, part 392, um, there's some information there, 392.5 and 392.4. Um, just like with where Kenny was talking about with with this uh, tractor protection system uh these violations uh for drug and alcohol possession and use roadside are out of service violations without question um there's some information on that flyer about these as well but one of the things that i did um was i went in and pulled some information just from the drug and alcohol clearinghouse about drug violations, alcohol violations, positives, things like that. And and since its inception in 2020, we're seeing a trend that's that's not great for our industry. Uh, violations continue to go up. When you look at uh, drug tests and violations in that category, just the drug test by themselves, those violations have gone up. But if you put the drug and alcohol violations together each year, 20, 21, 22, and 23, the violations have continued to increase. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they're looking at this and saying, okay, we're going to focus on this area. This is going to be one of the things that they focus on this year. Um, and it's extremely important, uh, that companies communicate with their drivers about this topic. It's not, you know, there there's, we can't play ignorant if we're in driving a truck and say, well, I just had, you know, a 12 pack of beer in the, in the sleeper because I was on my way home and, and, uh, you know, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to partake, but it's, it can't be in the truck, can't be in the cab. If it's not manifested as part of the load, you can't have it in there. And obviously under the influences is, is, is an issue that, uh, should be common sense for everybody that we know we're not using any, uh, any illegal drugs or any alcohol while we're driving a truck. But that's something that as companies, we, you you have the responsibility to talk to your drivers about those issues. So Kenny roadside, I know things have changed over the years, but uh, how big of a problem do you see this is with our truck drivers out there on the road? Well, the fact that we've got so many in the clearinghouse, Mike, and, and we know that we're not catching all of them. So those numbers are always underreported. So it's a huge issue in our industry. And you know, one thing different about this particular violation we're talking about now being an emphasis of, of uh, Operation Road Check versus the tractor protection device, really any equipment violation is uh, you don't have to be very far over the line in these types of violations to where it gets into criminal nature. And by that, I mean, and, and I'm just talking frankly now to truck drivers that are listening you know, uh, let, the tractor protection device, let's say you've got air leaks, you know, like crazy, and uh, they put you out of service and they write an inspection report and even write a ticket for you to contact a judge somewhere. You're still going to be allowed to sit there in that truck till a mechanic gets out there or a record comes. But if you roll into the scales and you've been drinking or they find drugs in that truck, there's a very good chance you're going to jail with handcuffs on because uh, there's not a state trooper on this planet that's going to pass up an opportunity to file a DWI or DUI charge against any driver of commercial motor vehicle or four wheeler motorcycle or whatever. I mean, they're just not going to walk away from that. So, you know, the fact that we've got so many drivers now in the clearinghouse, we notice people are using illegal controlled substances. We suspect these violations happen. And uh, so I, I just want to be as, as forthcoming as we can be about the seriousness of this this isn't one of those wink, wink deals that is just a thing. And one reason, and, and Mike, I, I love that you referenced last year's uh, episode on the podcast where we did talk about the history of operation, operation Road Check. But one thing they do in picking their topics for future road checks is based on the number of violations they've had of that offense in, in the past. And so it tells you that they, they've seen a trend. And I say they, CBSA has seen a trend when the data has been reported from from previous operation road checks, the drivers are getting caught with controlled substances or alcohol in the truck. And so this year they're, they're, uh, they're making a focus on that. So, 
uh, it's a real issue. And I know we have a lot of trucking companies that listen to the podcast as well. And, and th- I know this isn't going to surprise you because you and I see it all the time, but it still surprises a lot of folks. There are, we're in year, we're coming up on year four now of the clearinghouse. Uh, it went into effect January 6th of 2020. So we are, we're, we're in year four of the clearinghouse. And, and uh, I still come across motor carriers, not our clients, heaven forbid, if it's one of our clients, shame on me if that happens. But I still come across motor carriers, primarily small, what I'm going to call a mom and pop operation three or four trucks, and maybe the husband drives himself and the wife keeps the books at the house, they will say in all sincerity, what is the clearinghouse? Mm -hmm. They're not a member of their state trucking association. They don't stay tuned in to industry news. And they have four or five truck drivers out there on the road that have never been queried, not once. And they need to know uh, from January 6, 2020 till today, that driver has been operating in a prohibited status. Uh, they're basically illegal. And yeah. now all the troopers now have the ability roadside to run the query to see if the driver has been queried. And two things are going to happen there. Number one, that's an offense in and of itself. But second, if they find a motor carrier that is not running queries, you can guarantee they're going to get an audit. They are going to get a compliance review. So uh, it's a double edged sword for these motor carriers that are ignoring or or don't have any knowledge of the clearinghouse yeah and i and kenny i think a lot of this focus area probably stems from how many violations we see out there now where they're stopping drivers that are prohibited in clearinghouse those those roadside guys are, are are running those names and they're coming up prohibited and it goes back to those companies like you were talking about that they didn't they didn't do the query you know they didn't hold up their end of the deal back at the office so they've got a guy out there running around that's prohibited and those violations show up and and uh, i i you know i think it's a common unfortunately a common thing to to see those things sprinkled in uh a a, a company's safety history and and uh, so it's important i guess i guess to the point you're making i i'll make this point uh, if you're listening to us out there, if you're if you're an owner of a company, a safety director, if you're working in the office, and and you're not running these queries, that's something that is needs to start happening immediately. I mean, it's it's of utmost importance that one when you bring a new driver in that you run that full pre-employment query, so you're getting the full history of that driver's uh, driving alcohol information, and then you're running your annual queries. Um, and if you get any, if you're, if you're logged in and, and into the clearinghouse and you're doing your queries like you're supposed to be, and you get a notification from the clearinghouse that there's an issue with the driver, follow up on that. Um, they are making that, that program uh, pretty robust and they're making it to where it, it's, um, they're trying to help motor carriers do the best they can to check up on drivers um, so make sure that uh, if you get any correspondence from them, an email that says, hey, this driver, uh, their status has changed, go in and check that. Go in and, and uh, uh, investigate that a little bit. Because um, as as we go through and look at the number of positive tests, refusals, things like that that are in the clearinghouse, it's just it's pretty staggering. There's a bunch of them. And yeah, uh, no, as I, no doubt about it. Yeah. As I said before, they just they just continue to grow and. And I would like to see those numbers start trending down. But so far, since the inception of the clearinghouse and the data that we've got there, that's just not the case. So, you know, Mike, um, and I was thinking about the people who've been listening to podcasts a long time know you and I come straight out of the trucking industry. And Jim is our OSHA and, and ag guy. But we've we've made the comment in the past that so many of Jim's clients have trucks. They may be a, a local farm co-op or they may be a a uh, a feed lot but they've got commercial motor vehicles as part of their operation and, and when i think about operation road check in relationship to the ag industry you know uh, there's a lot of those trucks on the ag side that also deal with hazmat and they're gonna have placards going down the road or whatever and and, and jim i i think you should share with your clients the fact that this this three-day intense operation represents a real threat uh, to some of those ag people that think that they've either got exemptions or they're running around with farm tags on, or they've got, you know, they, they, their state allows uh, certain exemptions on, on driver's license dealing with agriculture, but they need to know if they've got a USDOT number and they're out here operating a commercial motor vehicle and they get stopped, both that state trooper and 
Federal Care Safety Administration looks at them as a trucking company. And so these very things we're talking about, you know, some of these ag industries think of their trucking operation as almost a sideline or an afterthought. It's not, but, you know, it, it's, it's emphasis programs like this that brings it to the forefront that, hey, you may think of yourself as a farm co-op, but the federal government thinks of you as a trucking company. And uh, these rules are just as applicable to those guys as well. I appreciate you saying that. I, I think that uh, sometimes some of my customers consider themselves, a, well, it's just a farming operation. You know, this is just a, it's a side product and we're only going 50 miles down the road and, and 40 of them are gravel roads. So we're just, we're going to avoid this by, by staying gravel or, or dirt road. And um, I've had to share with them, you, you touch that highway, you get on the highway, you're susceptible to these rules. So yeah, I'll absolutely follow up with them. I know, Jim, you and I, over the last several months, we worked with uh, kind of jointly on a couple of uh, companies that are your your clients on the ag world. And, uh, you know, to their credit, I mean, they they want to know what the regulations are. They want to be in compliance, that kind of thing. Um, but as you stated, Kenny, that a lot of times those uh, those guys on the ag side, the trucking secondary, the ag part of it's primary, but they're still wanting to do it right. And, you know, it's, it, it's a challenge for them to, to wade through these regulations to know, okay, what's right, what's wrong, that kind of thing. So kudos to you, Jim, because you're doing a great job and letting those companies know, yeah, this may not be your primary business here, but there's some regulations that apply and there's some things you need to know. And, and uh, I know Jim does a great job with his clients on that for sure. Well, guys, that's that. Those are the focus areas. Um, you know, you know, we're talking about road check here. We're talking about the two main focus areas. And again, I think I said this on the last episode we did on the road check, and I'll just reiterate it a little bit. And and I think all of our listeners know this, but just know when you get stopped during this this seventy two hour window, and they're they're doing inspections on you, whether it's level one or level two. Um, they're not just looking at these two focus areas. They're going to look that truck over. They're going to do a full inspection, most likely level one, especially if it's at a scale, if it's at a remote location, they may do level two, but um, they're going to look everything over. So this is a great opportunity for you as, as drivers and you all as, as motor carriers to, um, to not only just look at these focus areas and make sure that we're talking to our drivers and we're talking to our maintenance staff about these two focus areas, but it's a good opportunity to just kind of tighten things up a little bit overall with that truck and, and, and really honestly do some training with your drivers. Um, this is a great opportunity. If you're going to do some drug and alcohol training, some refresher training with your drivers, great opportunity to do it. That should be happening on a regular basis. And, and I don't want to get, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on regulations and stuff like that. But if, if you're a safety director listening to us out there, when we're talking about this and I'm, and I keep focusing back on this drug and alcohol possession focus area, but I think it's really important because it's, it's something that, um, is Kenny walked through the things that can happen, not only to the driver, but ultimately the end result that could be catastrophic is that driver's under the influence and they cause an accident and take someone's life. That's what we want to guard against. So for our safety directors out there, if you're looking for some information on training your drivers, go to 382 subpart B, which talks about some prohibitions uh, when it comes to drug and alcohol use, and then look at 392.4 and 392.5. There are some prohibitions of drug uh, possession and influence and alcohol possession and influence there as well. Just look at those two parts of the regs and you'll have all you need for a safety meeting. Uh, it's, it's really right there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but just take a look at the regs. And talk to your drivers about this. It, it's it's really important. You know, Mike, I've watched you teach, and I, I know you're a master instructor, and I love how you always uh, come around to the training aspect of whatever topic we're talking about. And uh, I agree with you. The drug and alcohol is, is so critically important. Uh, but the other topic, the, the uh, tractor protection device, I could foresee a safety director going out if they've got their own shop, uh, going out to the maintenance director, the head mechanic, whoever, somebody, and say, hey, I want to bring a truck and a trailer in here to the shop, and uh, I, I want to have a driver meeting and and print off that, that inspection bulletin from CBSA. And just yep. the safety director and the mechanic say, say, look, here's what the troopers are going to be doing on the side of the road. Can we bring a truck and a trailer into the shop? I want to bring the drivers out here. 
and let's walk through step by step this process and let all the drivers see number one what the procedure is going to be and number two what happens with the truck and make sure the brakes set on the trailer make sure the air uh, reservoir stays uh, up on the tractor and let the drivers physically see what is going to occur uh, at, at that location and and so I I just I love the fact you always reference training and I, I could see a safety director using this op preparation for operation road check uh, as a real training opportunity to involve their shop as well I agree 100 percent and I think that's a would be a great practice and and uh, there's some there's some opportunities here and, and when we go back to the beginning of this podcast when you guys were given some advice both of you talked about being learners and and uh, having that be just a part of your life. This is a great opportunity for continued improvement for the drivers and mechanics. Because I'm telling you, uh, we're not, you know, it's the goal is not to make your driver a mechanic to s diagnose a problem and fix it, whatever. But if you t would take a driver out, walk them through that inspection bulletin and the process of checking that tractor protection system, their understanding of that, the way that, this vehicle that they're operating works has increased. It's making them a better driver. Now they're more, Absolutely. they're more professional. They, they, yeah. they've gained a skill. Now they understand how this works. They understand what happens if they do get, uh, for some reason we get involved in a situation where their trailer breaks away from the tractor. They understand the process of how this tractor protection system works and what it's doing and the importance of inspecting it. So I think that's a great, a great point you bring up Kenny. So um, there's some opportunity here. If you're listening to us out there, there's some opportunity here, um, for, for continued learning for, for continued improvement. So take advantage of that stuff for sure. Guys, I think, I think some, a couple of good, good focus areas here for, for our companies. And, and hopefully you guys, uh, will take this information and really take it out to your, uh, companies and share and, and discuss, discuss these topics with your drivers, with your mechanics, um, all throughout the company. Um, so everybody understands the importance of, of why the CBSA does, uh, what they're doing in this road check. So with that, I, I think we'll close. We appreciate everybody that's listening to us. Uh, and I know we say this a lot, but we certainly do appreciate you joining us. We hope that you get something out of this. And, and if you want to provide any of us feedback, I know that, uh, uh, we would certainly take it. Uh, because we do this for you all. We like to get together and talk safety. And I know Kenny and Jim, you guys and I, we would all get together and talk safety. This is fun for us. But the podcast itself is we want to share this information with with uh, all you folks out there listening. So we appreciate that to all of you out there, whether you're a, a young person graduating, uh, maybe you're stepping into a new uh, a new role, or maybe you're just maybe you're just thinking about stepping into a new role. I want to encourage you with Kenny and Jim's words before: be fearless, don't be afraid of the next step in life, and just continue to be a lifelong learner. And we are looking forward to having you next time, uh, where we're going to talk about how we got into the safety world and maybe how some other folks out there in the industry uh, got into the safety world. Uh, I think it's going to be a great conversation, but until then we, we certainly do appreciate you joining us. Stay safe out there and we'll catch you next time right here on driving the line. That's all the time we have for this episode of driving the line, the pursuit of safety. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and thank you for listening. You can rate, review, and subscribe to Driving the Line, The Pursuit of Safety on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other app you're using. You can also follow Marsh McLennan Agency on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, thanks again for listening. Drive safely, everyone.